Have a look this, at this one, number two. Uh, so what kind of shape is this again? Starts with a P. Parabola. Uh, it's a parabola, okay. So um, lots to like about this. It's, it's got a great, nice, simple, smooth curve to it. Um, I have the vertex right there. Um, however, I will point out there's just one piece of information that's missing. Because at the moment when I look at that, that could be minus x squared, or it could be minus 2x squared, or minus 3x squared. They, they all look like that. So I need to put on one more piece of information that helps me know it's this one and not some other graph. What piece of information do I need? Any takers? I need to know horizontally, vertically, how big is this thing, right? Like a point like say here. If that was x equals 1, is the y value, like, is that a really small number? Is it like uh, a negative a half or negative a quarter? Or is it a huge number? Is it negative 100? Because remember, those axes can have different scales, right? So I kind of need to know where that is. How do I find out where that is? How do I find out the y value if I know the x value, which is 1? What do I do? I'm going to... Substitute in, right? So if x is equal to 1, then y will be equal to, watch carefully, right? Minus 1 squared. I'm taking that number and I'm popping it into the original equation that defines this whole situation, okay? So what is y then? y will be just minus 1. Watch out, that negative sign is not being squared. How would I write this if I did want the negative sign to be squared? I need some brackets around that, but there aren't brackets. So the minus sign is separate to the squaring. Okay? So therefore, this point here is 1, negative 1. And you should have a point like that on your graph too. It doesn't have to be that point. It could be any other point. As long as it is a point that shows me how big the thing is. Okay, uh, I guess we'll shuffle over to number 4. Uh, have a look at this power here. What's this guy called again? It's a, the cubic curve. Uh, the shape looks great. Um, I notice we have the y-intercept there, 0, 1, thumbs up. Um, we need the x-intercept, though. How do I find out the x-intercept? To find the y-intercept, you make x0. To find the x-intercept, you make y0. Okay? So we can actually, let's jot this down just over here. Um, if y is 0, then x cubed plus 1 is equal to 0. Do you see I've just put 0 where y was? So uh, you can see I can solve this by rearranging just a teeny bit. Huh. What's the number that when you multiply it by itself three times gives you negative 1? It's negative 1. And you can chuck that into your calculator as well. Um, you can use the cube root button. You've got a cube root button there. Okay. So therefore, that's the x-intercept. That's the value I need to put in over here, negative 1. Okay. This cubic curve, it's missing some things on the ends. What does it need on the ends? It needs arrows. Why does it need arrows? Yeah, it shows that it never stops. Some graphs actually stop. They have a beginning, they have an end. This graph keeps going forever. Okay, so those arrows means. <coughs> Do I need a point for scale on this one? If you're not sure, if you're ever unsure, just, just put it on because that way you can be safe. Okay? However, in this case, I know how big this thing is because I have uh, a y-intercept and an x-intercept. I've, I've got both. Okay? In this case, do you see, um, I only had that one point of information, so I didn't know how big this thing was. Uh, but when I've got two, I'm, I'm happy. Okay? All right, let's have a look at the ones that we haven't got yet. Um, this guy over here, what kind of shape is it? It's not a parabola, it's not a cubic curve, it's a? It's a straight line, so that's why we call it a linear function. Uh, see this number, a half, what does that tell you about the graph? It tells you, Brian? It tells you the gradient, so if the gradient is a half, how would you describe that in words? Like, is that up, down, steep, shallow? What is it? Shallow. It's shallow, it's less than one. Is it going up or is it going down? Up. It's going up because it's positive, isn't it, right? So there's a plus sign hiding there. So therefore, I know that it's going to sort of go up like that. What does the plus 2 tell me? It's, it's how high it is, right? So it's the y-intercept. So there's 2. So now I'm going to draw it in. There you go. Now, um, just like always, I need some intercepts. You already told me what the y-intercept is. It's 2. How do I find the x-intercept? 
I make, just like before, I make y equals zero. When you put zero here, if you go ahead and you solve, I think you should get x is equal to negative four. Negative four. And one of the great things about having drawn your graph is that if you've drawn it reasonably, and you guys even have a grid on your page, it even sort of looks like negative four. Do you notice that? Like it's, it's further away, it's on the left hand side. So negative four confirms things for us. Um, I do want to point out, when I was going around, I had a look. Several people drew their set of axes, but then their set of axes was too small and they only saw like that much of the graph. So I don't know where the, the other intercept is. And that's kind of important. So you need to make sure your graph is big enough, um, your Cartesian plane is big enough, so you can see everything. Okay. Um, before I do this last one, can I just point your attention? Mark, I'm going to pinch your book. Okay. Um, we'll look at... <laughs> There we go. Oh, yeah, freeze it when your arm is in the way. That's great. OK, there you go. Um, I just want to point to marks before we look at the last one. So um, we had a look at this. You can see it's got that, that slope there. It's got the points that we mentioned. When you have a look at his parabola, I, I really like, have, please pay close attention to this shape. Um, one of the things that's important about it is, do you notice it gets steeper and steeper and steeper? But it never actually goes like straight up and down, and it certainly never like sort of comes back on itself. I had a look around. I saw some people who sort of um, whips back around because you sort of you draw the curve, and that's what your, your hand does. If it does that by accident, you have an extra bit here. Just just rub it out. Like you you graphed it in pencil, right? Like Mark did. So therefore, it's easy to fix. Last one. I'll make this one quick. Uh, this is the starts with an H. What kind of shape is it? It's the hyperbola. So it's got these um, funny dotted lines on it. These are the asymptotes because the graph approaches these lines, but it never quite gets there. Okay? This is the general shape you're expecting. It never collides with any of the axes, so there are no intercepts to find. That's kind of nice, less work. Uh, but it does mean I need one of these guys, right? Because I've got no idea if this is. 2 over x, or 1 over x, or 500 over x. So what point would you like me to put on there? Give me an x value. How about x equals 1? x equals 1 is always a really easy number to play with because it's so easy to calculate. So if I just say that point there, let's call that 1, what will y equal? 2 over 1 is just 2. So I label that spot and I say 1, 2. Okay. Um, and it's really nice, you might have noticed, I drew it before I knew where that was. You're like, that, that 2 doesn't look twice as high as that 1 is to the right, but it, it doesn't matter. The x and the y's can be completely independent, so you can draw your shape and then just label it accordingly. All right.